Hello everyone, I thought I'd give you an update on what's um, what's new on my new ride system, um, my fully automated system. So as you can see, here's my um, nearly completed control panel. As you can see, I have, um, I have a key for uh, starting up the CPU. We have the emergency stop, which will actually shut down all the zones, all six zones. Uh, system fault light, so if there's a problem, the computer will recognize it and eliminate this light. Um, warning bell, warning bell, I have, um, I'm going to have one of these like bells right here. I'm going to have one or two of them within the attraction. So, um, when I want to clear, make sure everybody's clear and out of the way, I'll go ahead and hit the bell. Um, we have our dispatch button, override for manually overriding the station and jog forward, which, um, will, um, advance the vehicle from the unload position to the low position. And the top, I have, uh, three 5.6 inch Marshall, uh, monitors. For the cameras I will be uh, implementing. And then right here you can see these lights here. Um, I haven't gotten the uh, diagram put on yet but um, that's gonna be my tracking. That's all six of my zones. So I can actually see live where each vehicle is of the two vehicles as they go around. And as you can see my my podium is nearly done. I'm putting this, I have this other coating I put on here to make it a little nicer. I still haven't finished it but it's in the works. So as you come around this way, back side, I actually um, have my 2000 watt power supply right here integrated in. Then uh, the transformer down there is for the bell. Once you hit the, the button for the bell, that's what will activate that. And this is what I've showed you before. Um, this is my PLC microcomputer. And um, as you can see, I'm about 80% wired up. So all my buttons and everything else, they're all wired up and ready to go. Then, um, as, you, as I said before, um, these are uh, for the six zones. This will be the power for each zone. So I'll be running my sensors and everything else in there, and I should be good to go. Now, my newest thing I got, um, I didn't make this myself, but I was actually going to emulate it myself. Um, I was fortunate enough to acquire this from Mr. Michael Aguilar. I hope I said that right, Michael, if you see this. Um, he actually um, featured this on Hollywood Forum back in 2016, I believe it was. Um, and so I got this off him, so I'm going to actually make a carbon copy for my second ride vehicle. So basically here is your, um, for the power, this is the tracking for the rear and the power setup. So basically it contacts the track right here, a little ball, and then it's on a, on a pivot. And the pivot is actually a lawnmower spindle uh, bearing hub. So, and then as far as the drive system for the motors, this is the, the setup he came up with. It's got your turnbuckle and a turnbuckle on the other side. Same hub, same lawnmower hub, 5 8 Then he just has, uh, we just have the wiring set up. On the bottom side, you see it's just an um, eighth inch uh, aluminum plate. And then he has a bracket here that holds the front end, which attaches it to the, uh, the aluminum bracket there. So, and the bottom, just the bottom of the bearing fell out here. As far as the track, the track is actually two two by twos that are attached together, which um, he did uh, that way it, it wouldn't warp as much with the weather and, and uh, all the moisture and everything. And basically, I believe this is a furring strip, I wanna think, I wanna say, but it's just um, aluminum. Uh, it was a bigger aluminum strip and he actually measured the two inches and he scored it and cut it with a X-Acto knife. And then he wrapped it around the end so you can have contact between all the sections. And then, um, there's little pegs that would hook the pieces of track together. As far as the turns, um, he also made these. I'm not taking any credit for this. I'm just uh, excited and happy that I got this so I can utilize it and uh, make more of it. But he used, um, I believe it's uh, 3 16 wood. And he did seven layers, which ends up being the two inches, I guess, or close enough. So, um, and it's the same thing with a two inch of the aluminum on there and he wrapped it around as well and he made those by making this jig right here which he also gave me which is awesome so i, I need to make more turns now this is the ride vehicle which i'm modifying i'm gonna um update it and do it the way i want to utilize it but um basically it has um three and a half inch uh, casters on there and this is this is emulating this is the uh the motor system the motor is actually mount right here this would imitate the um same bearing there, so that's that would be the front motor system. 
And here's where the rear mounts on. It mounts flush. Oh, the other thing about that is that there's a spacer on it, so it actually lines up with the track. Then used uh, four little casters on there. I haven't decided if I want to do that the same or change a little bit. And as far as, um, I'll go back to the power here because this is more intricate. Um, you can see there's a spring hinge. Then you get your power connection for the one side. And then he uh, put eyelets on here that he isolated. And so you can put more tension on there so it's spring loaded. So the whole thing will keep tension and connect on the track. So um, pretty awesome. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna close up there so you can see a little better. And then the other side, it's just a carbon copy. And over here he made, um, this is obviously upside down, but uh, he just made an adjustable bracket so you can adjust it to the height of the track, wherever the contact would be, which is pretty ingenious and nice. So the only difference is he added a second piece on top to actually um, make it more rigid and a little more um, spring-loaded to help keep the tension on the track. So anyway, um, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm actually really close to having a running model. So um, once I figure out what I'm gonna do with my ride vehicle as, as far as um, the base and everything, how I, I might narrow it up a little bit. I haven't decided yet. But if I do that, I'll have to go ahead and uh, do some testing to make sure it's gonna clear. So I'll probably make a prototype, run the same stuff on there in the same spots and then see what happens. What's great about this system is that um, it has two swivels on it, so it can actually go around tight turns, which is awesome. And so it makes it, even though it's a wider vehicle, it can actually fit around a lot of corners, like, really easily. So it's a really ingenious design. Thank you, Michael, so much for uh, letting me acquire this off you. I really appreciate it. So anyway, so um, that's pretty much it for right now. Um, I'll get back to you guys with more updates and all that good stuff. Um, and I'll see you about when I get some free time, try to make some more videos here. And I will see you then. So uh, stay spooky.